It's show and tell time. We just got back from the Music City Mopar Club show and swap meet over in Lebanon. Nice group of people. So we picked up some stuff for our cars, for our project. So let's show you what we got. Um, okay, first, you know, I'm all about like survival now, right? You know, it's doom, we've got no parts, the economy's collapsing. Look, I bought some points distributors. 10 bucks a pop, how do you beat that, right? Okay. Then I picked up these very nice condition. They're filthy, right? But they're not pitted. Vintage Moroso small block valve covers. We're going to put these on the motor, the, the next motor that we're building for Bottle Rocket. So these ought to polish up really nice. You know, yeah, they're retro, right? I like, I like that kind of stuff. They're pretty. All right, put this over here. Bling. Okay. Slag hammer has a new intake, right? <laughs> I mean, why not? Uh, you know, okay. Eventually, I'd like to put a blower motor in the car. But before we do a blower motor, let's build a 383 with this thing and see how it runs. So we got a good deal on that too, right? Cat, we got a good deal on this. Yeah, yeah, good deal. Okay. And we got a door for slag hammer. So now I can start doing the actual finish work on the on the B pillars, get that all welded up, and then start f making filler panels for the rear doors. But again, we're not going to mess with this probably until around the holidays. But I picked this up. This is interesting. This is interesting. Actually, let's go back over here to the uh, to the bench. And then we picked up this door stop. So what we got here is. A 1967 426 Hemi head, which is actually virgin. Uh, it's even got the original studs on the valve cover side. So this right here is, is a problem. And what we see here is that this engine swallowed a bolt and it was a, a fairly substantial size bolt. It was like a 5 16 You see the threads embedded in the chamber right there? And it, it bounced around and it, it poked through. And this is actually a common area for cracks to form on a 426 Hemi head, even without that type of damage. Yesterday we talked about the Magnum, and we talked about the way it, they crack between the valve seats. Well, on the 426 Hemi, you get those same cracks happen here, between the valve seat and the spark plug hole. So you'll, it'll, they'll develop cracks right across there like that. And that's common on an engine that's been run severe duty, uh, again, blown alcohol blown nitro, something where it sees like crazy detonation cycles. But they'll run for a long time like that. They don't run for a long time when they have a big giant hole in a combustion chamber. I bought, years ago, I bought a, a, a pallet of 426 Hemi heads that started, I believe, at Speedwin Automotive in New York. And uh, all of them had this type of damage. What I noticed though is that most of them didn't have any obvious reason for the damage. So notice on this one here, we can see where it's got, it's got threads embedded in the chamber. So it obviously what happened to this one. But I have seen these chambers just blow out. And you see now, I can't get a caliper in there, but right here, this thin spot is only about 200 thousandths of an inch. So you get one of these engines and you run into, let's say, even just a street engine, and you run into like a heavy detonation cycle, It'll crack the chamber right there. Some of them are cast a little bit thicker than others. But if you are looking at 426 Hemi heads, especially like, okay, so you're at a swap meet like we just were at, and you see somebody who's got a set of heads out there, you want to really look at the chambers in this area. If you can, get a piece of sandpaper or emery cloth and clean them up, the hollow areas of the chamber. And you look for any sort of stress cracks, because that was a very, very common thing on these. And like I said, when you look at this one and you see how thin it is in this area right here, you understand why they would crack like that. So this engine, this head, is it, its days of holding water are done. So in other words, you could repair this head. Let's say it was a, it was a very rare head. Let's say it was a 64K head and you wanted to try to preserve it. You know, This could be done. This could be repaired by a competent welder going through. But the cost of the repair is more than the head would be worth. So in a situation like this, this head can be 
repaired well enough to run dry. So let's say you can run alcohol, you can run nitro, you know, just a drag only application where there's no cooling system in it. This head will actually, this is a really nice head. Um, this can be repaired relatively cheaply. You fill the head the same way you would fill a block and you go out and run it and it'll last you forever. But when you've got something like this, or you find one where it has the stress cracks in this chamber here, just, and you'll see them like right here. Just exactly where you see this one broken out is where you'll see the stress cracks on one before they break out. It's, it's no bueno for any type of street use. So that's okay, so we picked up a bunch of odds and ends for our various projects, and now we have to get our stuff ready to go to the track tonight. So enough of this, and I'll see you tomorrow.